Hey guys, it's Mr. V, and this is Apes Review Video Topic 4.9, El Nino and La Nina. And this is the last video for the Unit 4 set. So in this video, uh, you're gonna, we're going to talk about ocean temperature and winds. So the Pacific itself is this very large body of water, right? And of course, it's warmed by the sun at the equator. Now, what happens is, typically, you're going to end up with an area, um, part of the ocean that gets warmed, and then another part that uh, gets cooled because of the trade winds, right, as they move. Well, what happens is, sometimes that area can get warmer than normal temperature, um, and that's what we would call an El Nino, right? Um, and then sometimes it can be cooler than usual, and that's what we call a La Nina situation, right? And so what those are is El Nino was named uh, in the 1600s uh, due to um, those voyagers who were noticing that that time of the year it occurred was around December, which for them was the uh, birth of Christ. So that's uh, where it comes from, right? So here's normal conditions, right? Normal conditions, here's the equator line, and on the left is Australia, and on the right is going to be, um, and that's over here, let me go ahead and draw a circle around it. So on the right side over here, this is gonna be uh, North America, that's uh, uh, going to be South America on the bottom there, right? So here you have kind of Florida, I'm in this area, right? And so normally the Western portion of the Pacific is very warm, and the Eastern is not, cool but what that does is it allows for what's called upwelling that water will rush up towards this portion and that's going to lead to certain uh, conditions that are normal right so you're going to see cooler water which means you're going to have very oxygen rich water um, and that's going to bring in all kinds of fish which means fishing will be good and you're going to see a lot more rain and storms towards the western portion um, of the pacific from our point of view right and then an El Nino condition, what that does is the trade winds shift and they cause that warm spot to be closer to North and South America over here, okay? And that warm spot is going to end up causing downwelling instead. So instead of us getting a bunch of uh, nice cold water with a lot of oxygen, we end up with warm water with low oxygen, so fishing gets pretty bad. And then the storm systems, because of the movement of the winds, tend to cause a little bit more rain for uh, North and South America. Mudslides can be pretty common in uh, uh, Peru and stuff like that. And uh, then Australia and those areas to the west, they'll end up with a little bit more drought. Okay. And then so another situation that can occur is a La Nina condition. That's where you end up with normal conditions, but instead it ends, tends to be a little bit more extreme, right? So that um, is pretty much like a normal condition, except you're going to end up with bigger storms in Australia um, and towards the west. And then us over here, we're going to end up with a lot more, um, a lot more uh, uh, of normal conditions, which is going to be a little bit uh, drier um, and it's going to be a lot more upwelling occurring, okay? And so there's other global consequences. So we mentioned some of these. Uh, normal conditions, you have a trade wind going east to west, um, and those are gonna cause upwelling. It's gonna be really good fishing off the South American coasts. Uh, the U.S. will be drier in those conditions, and South America uh, will be drier as well. And then Australia is gonna get more wet. They're gonna have more storms, um, likely more cyclones as well. And then La Nina conditions, that's going to be an extreme version of that, where um, our conditions tend to be very dry. Even now in the southern um, uh, southern portions of the United States, they're going to end up with a warmer than normal winter during a La Nina year because of the um, uh, shift in the winds. Okay, And so... Um, an El Nino Southern Oscillation, that happens when the trade winds shift and that surface near South America is warmer, so it's got less oxygen in there and fishing drops, so that tends to have economic consequences. And then you get rainy conditions in South America and the U.S., and as I mentioned, they're going to get a lot of mudslides in South America. And then upwelling is going to occur on that Australian coast, so that's going to be a shift in the migration of fisheries as well. So that's going to be an important uh, thing to remember as well. So it's not only environmental consequences, but also uh, economic consequences, which is a good distinction to make on the AP exam. So here's what uh, kind of like a, a big general picture of the whole world during an El Nino year, right? So as you can see, the United States has very wet temperatures or very wet conditions, right? It's very dry at the northern areas, but then uh, closer to the uh, South American portions, they're going to get a lot of rain in different parts. 
Australia is going to be typically very dry uh, during those years. And then parts of uh, Africa and the Middle East are also going to get different changes in weather as well. So um, that's an important thing to understand. So just that one shift in the trade winds of the Pacific can cause a really big uh, shift in global climate and temperature as well. So here's some other resources if you definitely would like to look into El Nino and La Nina and normal conditions. Um, and hopefully those will be helpful. And hopefully this was helpful. Thank you very much.